Welcome to our show. Uh, welcome to our show. I'm your host Shivani Raj. For today's show, we have Mr. Lawyer uh, Shrinivas Kaveti. Uh, please note that Sachi TV now has four immigration shows every week on Tuesdays with Mr. Shrinivas Kaveti, on Wednesdays with Mr. Shanti Reddy in English, on Thursdays with Mr. Chan Parvat Neeli, and on Fridays with Banu and Indra. Please tune in to ask your questions. If you are an immigration attorney and would like to join our special shows, please email us at usa at sakshi.com or call us at 8667257441. Before we begin the show, please note that the information provided on the show is not legal advice and for general information purposes only. Sakshi TV or its agents will not be responsible for the use of information. If you need any specific legal advice, please contact the attorney directly. Uh, Mr. Kaveti needs no information or no introduction, but if you need any consultation, you can log on to their law firm. Uh, without any further delay, let's welcome Kaveti Garu. Hello, Kaveti Garu. Welcome back to our show. Thank you, uh, Shivani. It was nice yes. uh, on your show. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, our, the pleasure is ours, uh, Kaveti Garu, as always. Uh, but firstly, Kaveti Garu, how are you? And, um, you know, our topic today is very different. Um, but first of all, can you tell us, we just got to know that you're going to be coming to India uh, next month and you have something really huge planned. Uh, so can you please give us some details about why you're planning to visit India right now? Um, we are doing some uh, seminars in um, Hyderabad and Vijayawad and Vishakhapatnam. Um, on um, immigration, on U.S. immigration, on EB-5 category and L-1, especially what you're going to talk today. Uh, most of the times, uh, you know, we, we see advertisements in Hyderabad saying that there are companies coming from U.S. Uh, to give some free, um, you know, seminars. Because I, I have a law firm in Hyderabad, I would like to do some uh, free seminars and free consultations for any clients who intend to immigrate to America whether it could be a corporate immigration or H-1Bs or uh, even family immigration, because a lot of, uh, you know, families are there in America. They intend to sponsor their families like brothers or sisters or mother, father, or, you know, children. Uh, those who are American citizens, those who intend to sponsor their families. The other misnomer a lot of people have is if you're a green card holder, you cannot sponsor. Um, that is actually wrong. So we want... We have done some uh, green cards for our firm has done some green cards for families uh, who are on a green card here in America. Though, those who went back to Hyderabad, married um, uh, woman in Hyderabad, the children, and within three to four months, uh, we got an approval for their green card. So even a permanent resident, a green card can also do it. So we're going to do those all those seminars uh, for free in Hyderabad, Vijayawada, and Vishakhapatnam. Um, I'm coming on the next month ending. So we're going to be there for a month and I'll be traveling to other cities as well. I know Delhi and Gujarat and, and even Punjab because um, recently one of our associates uh, uh, went to Czech Republic and Hungary and uh, they're doing some work visas to Czech Republic and Hungary. So we're going to do some seminars on that as well in Punjab. So we have you know a lot of things lined up when I come back next month. Yes. So I'll be happy to assist her clients. Yes. Uh, so, Mr. Kaveti, I was thinking, let's just get on to the topic. Uh, so, you just uh, st uh, said something about the EB-5. So, how different is EB-5 with the L-1 visa? So, we just speci specifically discussed that we will uh, talk about the L-1 visas. Uh, but we, before completely we get into it, can you just give a brief introduction about what EB-5 and L-1 are? See, EB-5 and um, L-1, these are corporate immigration. I mean, uh, most of the times uh, people have a misnomer saying that, you know, if you have a company, you need to have a million dollars to migrate to America. Of course, it's a different category of people. Uh, those who are very high net worth individuals, uh, those who uh, have money, more than a million dollars in their bank account. And that too, this has to be a, a clean money, tax paid money. It cannot be a black money. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it has to be a documented income. The income cannot be from, uh, you know, drugs or mafia or any unlawful means. These have to be legitimately made money. So those who have money in their accounts or they have assets in uh, worth uh, more than a million dollars, and if they want to invest that money in U.S., they can invest, the, invest that money in America. Uh, they can uh, set up a company in a notified area. I mean, 
there are certain notified areas. Every year, the Immigration and Department of Labor and other agencies, they declared uh, certain areas in America as notified areas. First of all, what is a notified area? Um, where there is less employment, uh, the Americans are trying to create more employment. So uh, those areas, if uh, any investors, if they want to invest more than, uh, let's say, a million dollars, and uh, if they can uh, you know, bring some uh, 10 employees, uh, then they can sponsor uh, you know, they can sponsor themselves, come to America, get their uh, green card, which is temporary green card for three years. And if you can show to the government of U.S. saying that, uh, you know, you have generated 10 employment and uh, you, you're going to run this business successfully, then you can apply for a green card after three years. So that's corporate immigration. That's called EB-5. And in the second category, what EB-5 has is let's say there are some regional centers, there are some successful entrepreneurs in America, they run these businesses. And if you're investing money in their company, uh, then you can get your um, a green card, temporary green card. After that uh, project uh, is uh, successfully launched, and once uh, there will be a turnaround time. Uh, the beauty is when you invest the money in these uh, regional centers, approved regional centers, that money goes into an escrow account and your money is protected, of course. And after the business takes off and after this completion, when they sign off that it's completed, you can um, request the money to be released and you can also apply for a green card, permanent green card. So that there are two categories. But most of the times we get calls saying that, you know, can we get a green card uh, sitting in America on an H1 or an F1 or some other categories? You know, people do call, especially IT companies. <clears throat> they have money, they can invest. So if they can show that uh, they have uh, tax returns that and that uh, these are all legitimate money, if they have a million dollars, I mean, $900,000 they have to invest, but there is an escrow fees and there's an attorney fees. Most of the lawyers, they would charge about, um, you know, close to uh, twenty-five to $30,000. So you're looking at about 25 to 30 lakhs Indian rupees. So if you can spend that much money and if you can show uh, that you have the sources are legitimate for three years, then you can come to America on the EB category. Whereas L1B visa, there are two types in L1 visa. One is called L1A and second is called L1B. What is L1A? The L1A is for uh, uh, you know CEOs, uh, CFOs, and CTOs. Our firm has done some L1s uh, from India. This could be a medium-sized companies also. We have done some elements from Bombay, and we have done some elements from uh, Delhi and from Gujarat. Uh, of course, uh, one uh, L1 we have done from Hyderabad as well, lately, recently. Uh, people do come to America. Uh, they open up a company, and uh, the CEOs can come from India to America. The prerequisite is that uh, the CEO uh, has to be on the payroll for Indian company for a minimum three years in the past one year. That's called L1A. And L1B, if you see Tata Consulting, uh, Mahendra, Infotech, all these companies, they bring their IT guys. You know, if you're a senior manager in IT information technology, they bring, uh, you know, five people, 10 people. That's called L1B. It's called blanket petition. And they come to America immediately and uh, they can work. And if the company wants to sponsor them for green card, there is no waiting period. Within two years, you can get a green card. So that is a difference between an EB-5 and an L1B, L1A and L1B. Yes, that was actually a very brief, uh, you know, uh, defenses uh, that uh, you just said, uh, Mr. Kaveti. Uh, so let's get on to the L1 visa specifically, because that's what we thought we will discuss a little. Uh, so what are like the basic requirements for the L1 visa, Mr. Kaveti? First of all, you have to have a company overseas for more than three years. And it has to be a profitable company and uh, you should have employees. You should have revenues. You should also have reserves. Um, you cannot have a, a shop and say that I would like to have an L1 in America. If you see a lot of jewelry shops now, you know, Jaya Lucas, Kalyan Jewelers and, you know, um, Tanishk and everybody. Now they are coming all over the world because they have operations back in India. These are big corporate joints. And if you see even restaurant business, even, um, you know, a uh, lot of uh, South Indian Udupi restaurants, 
they're coming to America, they're going to a lot of countries. And if you see Paradise uh, Biryani Center also, they've started. You know, you have to have a company um, and uh, that has to be in business for more than three years. And they have to have employees and they have to have reserves. And if you're working for that company overseas, which is anywhere in the world, they can come to America. They can set up a company here and they can transfer the employee, uh, CEO or CFO or CTO uh, or chief man, you know, marketing manager, anybody. Um, to America, that's called intra-company transfer. One is called intercompany, one is called intra-company. Uh, this is called intra-company transfer, I-N-T-R-A, intra-company. So people from Indian company to U.S. company, they can come and they can work for U.S. company. Um, that is L1A. If some people, they're IT guys, if they're, uh, if they're you know, project managers or IT consultants, those who want to come to America and work in America, if the company, if the you know management decides that they want to send a group of uh, individuals to U.S., they can do an L1B, which is called a blanket petition. You know, many times all this uh, Microsoft or Google or even Indian companies, those who are running businesses like Tata Consultancy, Mahindra Tech, and all these guys, they bring uh, employees on L1B, not L1A. And uh, they bring blanket, you know, they bring 50 people, 100 people, you know, things like that, because they have to justify that they are coming uh, to do the project in America, you know. So that's that's what it is. And the requirements are you should be on the payroll in overseas and they should have um, reserves. And that has to be because they will the immigration will check up whether you have bona fide company or not. You have to be registered with Dun & Broad Street. That's called, you know, third-party verification. They will verify the company overseas in India or anywhere in the world, and they will verify the company in America, <clears throat> and then the uh, immigration approves uh, the petition. Yes. That's uh, granted uh, for one year to two years, you know. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Kavite, can you explain the term called as the transferee, and what are the L1 visa requirements for the transferee? The person who's coming from... Uh, Overseas company to U.S. Uh, company is called transferee. They're getting transferred. And the companies overseas can be a partnership. They can be a private limited company. They can be a public limited company as well. And uh, cannot be a proprietorship because some people call me and say, oh, I'm running a proprietorship concern. Can I start up a company in America and come? The answer is no. It has to be a legal entity, either a partnership firm or a private limited company or a LLP. It can be a limited liability partnership or it could be any registered company, you know, and it could be a public company as well. I mean, even government agencies can also open up a companies in America and they transfer people. For example, if you see banks, a Baroda Bank, you know, it's a nationalized bank in India and we have Baroda Bank in America too. You understand what I mean? And uh, they do come to America, banks do come to America. So banking institutions, these are public limited companies, uh, the government of uh, India, they, because they're all naturalized banks. So they can also come. So the requirement is the person who's working has to be in the top management. They have to be on the payroll and uh, they can come to America and work with the terms and conditions of U.S. law. Um, they have to get paid in America. You see, that's what it is. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Kaviti, is, you know, anybody who is getting an L1 visa, uh, are there any, so that you just said that it's for a business kind of visa. So are there any specific businesses that, uh, uh, you know, any business requirements that a company must have uh, to get an L1 visa? Uh, the inter interesting question. If you see, uh, I mean, you know, jewelry business guys are coming to America to sell, to sell jewelry. Jai Lucas is there in America. And, um, you know, if you see restaurants, uh, they have uh, come to America, I mean, selling food. Uh, if you see uh, the, uh, you know, uh, Hyderabad uh, uh, Paradise and, um, you know, there are a lot of uh, uh, companies from Tamil Nadu also have come uh, to sell the food, vegetarian food. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, even uh, selling sweets. If you see uh, the sweet companies uh, also coming, those who sell sweets to America, come and set up. Uh, companies, Hot uh, Breads, which is a Tamil Nadu company, they manufacture breads, they are bakeries, and they came to American setup. So they're also coming. So there's there's no specific uh, business. 
And uh, if you see uh, Patel Roadways, it's a it's a it's a, a logistic company from India. Patel Roadways is an India oldest company. They came to America and set up a company in America. Uh, so they they diversified into money transmission business. And if you see even Reliance, Reliance have come to America. They bought all the cinema theaters in America, and they're uh, they're they're doing uh, Bollywood shows. They're doing Bollywood movies. So there is no specific um, a definition saying that. You can only do this business, you know. Uh, you know, if you see some Chinese companies, they are uh, drama companies. They come and do certain uh, dramas in America. So it's it's so you know they can come in any industry as long as you can justify to the USCIS that you can create some employment. The key is that you're coming and generating some employment to the local Americans. So that's the key. That's what they're looking at. You're coming and generating some employment to Americans. So as long as you can justify, it doesn't matter. It has to be a legitimate business. You can't say that I'll come and open up a, a you know drugstore or something. You know, you understand what I mean? So yeah, you know, it's like even pharmaceutical companies. If you see, uh, Shanta Biotech have come. They opened up a the manufacturing unit in, uh, in Delaware and in Washington. So you know, uh, pharmaceutical companies and a lot of companies they're coming to set up companies in America. Even some law firms are coming from India. I just met one of the lawyer from from Delhi. They have come and set up a law firm in uh, New York. Yes, it's Indian uh, law firm. So, yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Kaveti, um, I, you know, you just said that mostly any kind of businesses, uh, there are just very few limitations. But, uh, you know, you just said that if the documentation is correct, you know, there's no way. But uh, let's say if a person with a jewelry. Uh, you know, who wants to open a jewelry store, they have different kinds of documentations. A person who wants to open a pharmacy, they have a different kind of uh, documentation required. So can you say what are some basic documentations that must be, you know, that must be proper, pen and proper uh, when they get their L1 visa approved? See, the first and foremost thing what they're looking at is uh, tax returns. You have to have a proper tax returns for three years. Even it could be a sales tax returns or VAT, nowadays we call this VAT, value added tax returns. So tax returns are the key and balance sheets and uh, board resolutions, uh, incorporation certificates, your licenses that you're running businesses overseas and um, permissions and uh, your lease documents, a list of employees and organizational chart. And, um, you know, the you know if you have a website, you need to have a website and some sort of your profile or a brochure, you know, any any company, whatever, when they do list of customers, if you have any businesses, why you want to come? The basic document is business plan. Why you want to come to America? You're sitting in uh, Hyderabad or Madras or Delhi or Bombay. Why you want to come to America, first of all? Why the CEO wants to come and do the business in America? Do you have any business in America? See, if you see uh, this jewelry business or food selling business, because there are tremendous Indians are coming to America, they all want to eat food. So these restaurants, they're coming and uh, they're opening up everywhere. A bakery, you know, the people, there are a lot of Indians, they want to eat that. And jewelry, because a lot of Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, they want to buy authentic jewelry. So you have to show that there is a demand and then you can set up the same business in America so that you have a business. You know, you have to do your due diligence. you got to show your business plan that... Uh, if you come and set up the same business in America, you're going to make some money. And two, um, you know, sometimes people also want to diversify, as I rightly said to you just now. Patel Roadways is a logistic business. They have 800 trucks in India. But are they doing trucking business in America? The answer is no. They got into money transmission business and they came into capital markets. So, you know, people want to come and buy some, um, you know, existing uh, hotels, restaurants, or even real estate. So different types of people want to come and do businesses, they diversify. So as long as you show it in your business plan that you are diversifying, that's fine for them. It doesn't matter for them. So as long as you can just, the business plan is the key. Business plan is the key. Yeah. Uh, so Mr. Kaviti, let's talk about the families of the L1 holders. So can they work or can they uh, go to uh, a school? So what kind of rights do a person um, uh, from the family of the L1 holder has? The beauty is uh, they can come, uh, the dependents can come to US uh, with their spouses on an L2 visa. 
they can come and work just like green colors. The wives or husbands would get to work authorization and the children can go back to school. They can also go to school as a local guys, not as international students. And they can also get some insurance. They can get driver's license. They get all the privileges, what the green card order says, as long as the spouses are running businesses legitimately in America. Yes. So what is exactly the process timing? I'm pretty sure it changes every, uh, you know, every other month because of, you know, the constant changes. Uh, but what is like the approximate processing time that uh, you have personally seen, Mr. Kavati? Well, if you're filing an L1 petition, it takes time. If you're doing a premium processing, uh, within 15 days to 45 days, it gets approved. And the consulates also give appointments for L1 category and uh, people do come, but they will do some basic investigation, either the consulates or the USCIS. As long as everything is legitimate, I don't see a problem. And we have done a lot of, our firm has done a lot of L1s. They, we have been successful. We work with the clients uh, from the incorporation of companies and get the L1 approval. And we send the documents overseas and uh, we uh, assist the client until the guy gets uh, L1A visa. Recently, uh, we have done um, uh, just an L1 visa last uh, last a few months ago for an IT consulting firm. So one of the you know chief manager has been transferred to America. They have a company in New York. So we just did one. So you know uh, you know it's possible. It takes time, but it's it's doable. Yes. Uh, so what what is this premium processing, and how much will that cost? Like, is it too expensive? And uh, can you please explain a little about that? Well, I mean, uh, premium processing is if you add twelve fifty dollars extra uh, with the basic I one twenty nine fees, um, you would get it. It doesn't cost too much. I mean, maybe close to two and a half thousand dollars, and it's it's doable. If you most of the time there there's be an RFE a request for further evidence. If you furnish all the documents to the immigration, uh, you will get it. I don't see a problem. Uh, you know, you got to work with the clients, and most of the times you must understand, Shivani. Uh, many uh, lawyers, those who do H-1B visas, they're not familiar with corporate immigration. See, this is a specialized area. Somebody who understands uh, business structuring, uh, business language, and corporate law, um, they, they would do a good job in filing an L-1 and getting an approval. So, you know, our firm has some background about that. Our lawyers in our firm has some MBAs, and they have law degrees from multiple countries. So we understand how things uh, work. So somebody, if you can understand business, because when you're petitioning uh, the immigration, uh, you know, you have to draft uh, the supporting letter in such a way that uh, there are a lot of criteria to be uh, fulfilled and uh, satisfied to the USCIS. So that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Kaviti, uh, let's say that one person is uh, on a, the N1 visa and they want to transfer it to another con uh, company. Uh, so, you know, there are many chances that a lot of people, they do tend to, you know, shift their job from one company to the another. Uh, what is the process with that? Is that like a complete different process that a person must, you know, stress out about? Or um, is it easy uh, if, if they go to an attorney and uh, a little more in, uh, input on that? Well, L1 visas are not, um, cannot handle by themselves. It's not that you can read something on Google and file it. You definitely need a competent uh, business immigration attorney to do that. Uh, I would suggest that uh, they should contact competent uh, business immigration attorneys and ask them whether they have done in the past, because they have to understand, because many times the attorneys sitting in America, they have to assist companies overseas as how to do a board resolutions, and organizational uh, chart, there is whole nine yards. So they should uh, contact some immigration attorneys who does business immigration, like L1Bs, L1As, and um, and even the EB5 category lawyers, they will be competent. People who have not done it, um, I, I wouldn't uh, suggest them to go to some lawyers you know, who are not competent and those who are not doing business immigration. So there's an expense you because you're dealing with the CEOs and CFOs and um, you're looking at corporate documents overseas and there are a lot of corporate documents to be done in America as well when you're filing an L1 petition. Yes. 
Uh, Mr. Kaviti, now that you've been very specifically talking about the business visas and the business, uh, you know, anything related to business, how important it is for the viewers who are watching the show to understand how different an immigration laws are and the business laws are in USA? Well, the thing you see, that's what I'm saying, because most of the times in the law school, they teach us company law, corporate law. But in the law schools, you know, there are very few law schools. They offer elective subject as immigration. So when you people come into, you know, when they become attorneys, they pass the bar exam, they practice law, but, you know, not many people specialize in corporate immigration. And there are very few lawyers, even they see lawyers who does EB-5 category uh, green cards. Not every lawyer who does H-1Bs and uh, labor certifications and adjustment of status applications, they do EB-5 and they do L-1 visas or green cards through L-1 adjustment of status. So I reckon uh, they should you know, they should see the background, talk to the lawyers, ask them if they've done any work in this area and retain them. So, because it's a lot of big stakes are involved. Yes. Uh, so let's talk about how does Kuwaiti law firm deal with uh, these kind of situations because you just said how complicated uh, an L1 visa is and it's pretty much, it's a very big deal, you know, when somebody wants to get it. So um, uh, so is there any of your personal experience about how did you deal with, uh, you know, how did you and your law firm dealt with? So because I have offices in uh, Hyderabad and we have associate lawyers in Bombay, Delhi and other cities, Madras, Bangalore, I do travel and I meet uh, clients personally. I mean, last time we, we, I was there in Bombay, I met the jewelry business guy and they've set up a, we have set up a company for them in California. And we work with some California lawyers, set up a firm in California. We did some L1 for them. So we were successful and they came to, uh, it's a jewelry business from Bombay. They came to California and set up a company and we did their L1s. So, you know, I do meet clients uh, quite often in different cities. They do come. And uh, this client, what we did was uh, an IT company. And uh, they wanted to bring their uh, senior manager to America. And this guy is sitting in Maharashtra. So whenever I went, you know, I talked to them, meet them, get the information, documents. And the chairman, the, the CEO sits in Boston. So working with uh, two different legis- legal jurisdictions, because I work in this firm, uh, you know, the local law firm here, Ramsey sure. Associate. So we 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 work we understand the U.S. system. We understand that side of the world. So I personally meet them and get the documents together and advise them if they are having any issues in Indian law, in Indian company law and corporate law. And sometimes, you know, they don't have company secretaries in India. So they ask us to draft uh, uh, resolutions and some business plan or system. So we assist them. So that's the way because our presence is in India and U.S., it is better for the clients, um, you know, they come to us. So we understand both jurisdictions. And we have done some work for UK as well, similar work. Uh, people who want to set up in uh, UK and do some work for UK as well. We have done some work to UK as well. So, you know, we our, our lawyers who are in our firm, they're experienced in corporate law and in uh, company law and uh, immigration law, corporate immigration. And uh, we have assisted clients in even uh, consulate affairs because they need to okay. know what that to carry and stuff like that so you know we yes. assist them in jurisdictions yes uh again thank you so much uh kaviti garu for joining on to our show we had such a great show uh we're very excited for your plans here in india and i'm pretty sure the viewers can you know they can tune into the to your free seminars that you are uh, going to be conducting uh, again thank you again for the viewers for tuning in you're watching sashi tv with me shivani raj mm-hmm.